Should you rest or exercise when you have back pain? Should you apply cold or heat? Should you get an MRI? How about surgery? I hear these questions from hundreds of patients every month. And in this video today, my goal is to set the record straight. Okay, so let's start by talking about bed rest. When you have acute back pain, your instinct might be to stay in bed all day because anytime you move, you might have some pain. However, a lot of high quality evidence has shown that bed rest is associated with worse outcomes. So next time you have back pain, don't stay in bed all day. Try to move. Don't do anything drastic, like don't go deadlifting at the gym all of a sudden, but you can still move around and that will probably be better for your back. Another thing to keep in mind is that staying sedentary in bed all day is not only leading to worse outcomes when it comes to back pain, but it's also potentially putting you at a higher risk for blood clots like DVTs. All right, moving on. A very common question that a lot of back pain patients have is whether they need an MRI of their lumbar spine or not. Now, before I answer this question, I'm just going to take a step back and we're going to go back in time actually to more than 20 years ago when there was a very interesting landmark study in the New England Journal of Medicine that basically looked at 98 asymptomatic individuals. So these are people who do not have any back pain. And basically they put them in an MRI scanner and they looked at their backs. And what they found was very interesting. They found that 64% of those participants had an abnormal MRI of their spine. And that included disc herniations, disc protrusions, and other arthritic changes in the facets and in the disc itself. Now remember, so those were all asymptomatic individuals. They do not have any back pain. And yet only 36% of them had a normal MRI. So what does this mean? Basically, just because your MRI shows something like a disc herniation does not mean that this is the cause of your pain. And that's why we don't really rush to doing MRIs. The general recommendation for acute back pain is to give it time, treat it conservatively with physical therapy, anti-inflammatory medications like NSAIDs. And then if you still have pain after several weeks, let's say six weeks, then it may be reasonable to get an MRI. However, there are circumstances where an MRI is absolutely indicated, even at an early stage. For example, if you have any of the red flags that I mentioned in my previous video on back pain, such as bowel and bladder changes, new numbness or weakness, that can definitely be a very reasonable indication to get an MRI. But for your typical non-specific back pain that is localized only in the back and doesn't have any red flags, then it's not necessarily a good idea to get an MRI that early on because you're gonna get a lot of false positives and essentially it's gonna send you and your doctor in the wrong direction because you're gonna be chasing a disc herniation and trying to treat it when it wasn't the cause of your pain to begin with. Okay, next up, when you have an acute injury to your back, should you be using cold or heat? A lot of times patients will assume that cold is better than heat or that heat is better than cold. And that's just not true. What the science says is essentially that both cold and heat can be good. And they're pretty much equally good. And they have different mechanisms. So the general recommendation is that initially, right after the injury so in the acute phase the first let's say couple days after the injury you have a lot of inflammation in the tissue so there's a lot of swelling and so in those cases during that time cold will potentially be a better idea than heat and that's because cold will lead to narrowing of the blood vessels vasoconstriction and that will ultimately lead to a decrease in the swelling of that soft tissue that's inflamed however once that acute phase is over then heat potentially might be a better idea because it leads to relaxation of the muscles and the tissues and more delivery of oxygen and nutrients to the tissue in question to help with the repair. Now, there have been studies trying to compare cold and heat with respect to chronic low back pain itself, and they really found that pretty much they're about the same in terms of efficacy. So I always tell my patients, do what you prefer. If it's winter time and you don't like cold in the first place, then maybe apply heat. And if it's summertime and it's super hot and you don't really want to apply heat to your bag, then apply cold. And if you want to alternate, that's reasonable. And if you want to try cold initially the first few days after an injury and then phase it out and then try heat afterward, that's also okay. But basically, one of them is not superior to the other one. And that applies to multiple types of chronic pain, including low back pain. All right, next up, a common misconception is that surgery is always a good idea for back pain. And that's simply not true. In fact, most people with back pain will not need surgery. The only times that surgery is indicated is if you have a lot of leg dominant symptoms. So that can include numbness, weakness in the legs, shooting pains in the legs, 
and especially if they have not resolved with less invasive therapy. So physical therapy, medications, and epidurals or other injections in your spine. Then in that case, it may be reasonable to try surgery. But surgery for back dominant pain is generally not the best idea and can actually lead to more problems later on, such as adjacent level disease, which is basically that let's say you have a fusion of those two levels right here, then a couple of years down the line, the wear and tear and the stress on the spine will actually go above and below that fusion. So then those levels will be affected and then you end up with problems at those levels above and below where the fusion was. So not necessarily always the best idea to have surgery. There are very clear and specific indications that you should discuss with your neurosurgeon or spine surgeon before signing up for surgery and not blindly assuming that surgery is going to fix everything. And then there's another entity that's called failed back surgery syndrome, which is basically when people have surgery in their back and then they unfortunately end up with more pain or no resolution of their pain. And so surgery really needs to be done for the right reasons and the right indications after very careful review of all the imaging and making sure that you've tried all the more conservative options first. All right, and then the last one I wanna go over today is that most low back pain is caused by a dangerous or insidious cause which is very incorrect. So based on a lot of studies, 85% of low back pain is actually caused by what we call mechanical low back pain or non-specific back pain, which is essentially either due to disc herniation or facet arthritis or sacroiliac joint pain. And you can refer back to my video on the common causes of back pain if you want to learn more. But only 15% are caused by dangerous or insidious causes. And so it's significantly more likely that your back pain is not due to a dangerous cause. And that's another reason why, going back to our earlier point on MRIs, we don't get MRIs for everybody. A lot of people get back pain at some point in their life, but very few of them will have a dangerous cause for it. All right, so that was basically it. But because you've stuck with me, you get a bonus. There were several interesting studies recently that showed basically that swearing also known as cursing, essentially can decrease the perception of pain by as much as 33%. So there were studies in which they compared patients having a painful stimulus applied, such as cold immersion. They were asked to essentially either use either swear or to say a word that is not a curse word, like cup. And what the researchers found is that even though both groups of participants experienced pain subjectively, the pain perception threshold was significantly higher, was about 33% higher for the participants that cursed. So next time you get back pain, you might want to consider that. Thank you for watching and make sure to share the video with anyone you know who has back pain and who might benefit from this content.